Well, hi there. This is a hagfish, a jawless, slimy, worm-eating fish found in the deep ocean and your nightmares. And you are basically the hagfish of reptiles. And I thought about ending this video right there, but I guess I better explain. If you noticed, I only called hagfish a fish in quotes. This is because it is only arguably a fish at all. Heck, it's only arguably a vertebrate. It is the only vertebrate with a skull but no actual vertebrae. And it goes right here on the vertebrate tree of life. Some of you may be very familiar with these diagrams, but many of you probably are not. So I'd like to explain exactly how these work. This diagram, called a phylogeny, depicts the proposed relationships between different organisms. This tree shows the relationship between different groups of living vertebrates. This tree shows the relationships between three people, Bob, Joe, and Brian. Now, as you may be able to see, Bob and Joe are more closely related to one another than they are to Brian. This would be the case if, for example, Bob and Joe are brothers and Brian is their cousin. I would say that Bob and Joe are more closely related because while all three of them share ancestors, Bob and Joe share parents and not just grandparents with one another. Because they share more recent common ancestors with one another than they do with Brian, they are more closely related even though they do share ancestors with Brian. Whichever two share ancestors more recently with one another are more closely related. And the relationships between them are the same if I draw the phylogeny like this, or like this, or like this. And these branching points, these represent the last time that two individuals or groups shared common ancestors. Brian shared all of these ancestors with Bob and Joe. And this was the last time he shared ancestors with either of them. Since he shares the same ancestors with Bob and Joe, I can't say which one of them is more closely related to Brian. He is equally related to both of them. And that isn't changed if I flip where I put Bob and Joe on the phylogeny. Bob, however, is more closely related to Joe than he is to Brian. This is because he shares ancestors more recently with Joe than he does with Brian. He shares ancestors with both of them, but he shares more recent ancestors with Joe and thus is more closely related to Joe. If I threw Stuart onto the phylogeny as well and saw that he goes here, then I would be able to see that Brian is more closely related to Bob and Joe than he is to Stuart. I would also be able to see that Stuart is equally related to Bob, Joe, and Brian because he shares the same ancestors with all of them. Now, I want to note one final thing. Bob and Joe, with their parents, form a family called a clade. A clade, also called a monophyletic group, is a common ancestor and all of its descendants. Brian, Bob, and Joe, with their most recent shared ancestors and everyone in between, also form a family, a clade. And the same is true for Bob, Joe, Brian, and Stuart, with their most recent shared ancestors and everyone in between. So it is possible to be part of multiple families, clades, all at the same time. And no matter how many generations go by, their descendants will always be part of those families as well. That is why birds can be dinosaurs, reptiles, tetrapods, vertebrates, and animals all at the same time, and that doesn't mean that they aren't unique or that they aren't birds. Even though Joe is in the same family as Bob, Brian, and Stuart, that doesn't change the fact that Joe is unique from Bob, Brian, and Stuart. Now let's say I wanted to talk about a family, a family that includes both Bob and Brian. I could be talking about this family with Stuart or this family without Stuart. Which one is right? Both of them. So which one am I talking about? I might need to tell you. And that brings me to the hagfish. Here is a phylogeny of the vertebrates. Or at least, here is a phylogeny that includes all of the vertebrates. Now the question is, do I want to include the hagfish or do I not? That's up to me. All of the other vertebrates share more recent common ancestors with all of the other vertebrates than they do with the hagfish. I can include the hagfish and the ancestors they share with the other vertebrates, or I cannot. It's up to me. Suppose now I am interested in the fish. What is a fish? Well, I think it's fair to say that trout are fish and sharks are fish. So I would need to look at the last time that sharks and trout shared common ancestors. 
Those would need to be fish as well, and everything that came from them. As I discussed in our video on whales, that group would include the whales. So while whales are mammals, that doesn't mean that they aren't part of the fish family, the fish clade as well, if you were interested in naming a clade fish. They would have to be in it, because they're part of any family that includes both sharks and trout, but not the hagfish. They are part of some families that include both sharks and trout, but unlike the whales, they're not part of every family that includes both sharks and trout. Should they be part of my fish family? That's up to me. And just one thing to note here, the lampreys are more closely related to all of the other fish than they are to the hagfish, so I could even include lampreys without including the hagfish. Poor hagfish. Are they just barely fish, or did they just miss the cut? But don't spend too long feeling bad for them, because you're in the same position. Here are the reptiles, or at least, here is a phylogeny that includes all of the reptiles. Notice where the birds are located. I can't get them out of the family without removing the crocodilians and the turtles as well. They're right in the middle of the family. I can't have a reptile clade that includes snakes and turtles without including the birds. But this clade that includes the lizards, turtles, birds, and crocodilians, called the diapsid clade, does not include you. You aren't in it. And yet everything alive today that I would consider to be a reptile is. So clearly, you are not a reptile. But what about this? Or this? Are these reptiles? Most would agree that they probably are. And yet these are part of the family over here, the synapsid clade. And that clade includes you too. You see, you share more recent common ancestors with a Dimetrodon than Dimetrodon does with the rest of the plastic reptiles in the bag of dinosaurs, or with any of the other diapsids. So I cannot create a clade that includes both Dimetrodon and Gus Gus without including you as well. The synapsids, including you, can either be included or excluded from this clade, because you are basically the hagfish of reptiles. And now you know. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Ooh. I'm so confused! <laughs> <laughs> so if I was gonna call a, create a group called monkeys, I'd have to include the apes, including us as well. So when people say, oh, you say we come from monkeys? It's like, no, it's worse. I'm saying you are a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's if monkey is a thing. So if we just want to add the sea stars in, then we're good. We just have to add all the deuterostomes, all the anus first developers, all the people who speak out of the far end of their anus. <laughs> um,